guys, Alex Sutherland here, and today I've got a new strategy pack for you on GTO bet sizing. This is a topic I've wanted to talk about for a while, and I've been working on putting together the material for this pack for quite some time now, so I'm super excited. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's get into it. So GTO play and bet sizing is a very complicated topic because in reality, No Limit Hold'em is a continuous game in the sense that there's no way you could actually really draw the game tree for the full game. I could bet any amount. So I could bet half pot or 60% pot. And if you drew that game tree, I could say, well, I could also draw bet 55% pot and maybe add that to the game tree. And, you know, just because there's an infinite number of values between zero and one, I can actually bet any amount that I want. There's no finite game tree that could ever, you know, fully capture the game. And so what we have to do as players is come up with an abstraction, a simplification that we can actually solve computationally, that we can actually think about and apply at the tables, because you'd never be able to play a strategy where you bet, you know, one over pi of the pot with certain hands and 37.89% of the pot with different hands. You know, both as players it would be completely impractical to use some kind of infinite best size strategy, but also as people trying to computationally solve GTO, even more than, you know, a few bet sizes quickly gets out of hand. So our job is often to pick a particular abstraction, a set of bet sizes that we think is going to reasonably accurately model the situation that we actually, that we find ourselves in when we're playing. And existing GTO solvers all leave this to us, whether you use you know, GTORB or SPF or PO or CREV, any of these tools, none of them will automatically figure out the best bet sizing in a specific situation and build a game tree that uses that size for you in advance, you know, we have to use our knowledge as poker players, our intuition, our experience. And what I'd like to add to that toolbox with the strategy pack is kind of our focused discipline, scientific inquiry to figure out what good bet sizing we should use in specific spots. And to properly use GTO calculations, we really need to kind of understand exactly what we're doing at a theory, theory level when we pick a set of bet sizes for our game tree and run a computational solution. And if you think about it, uh, similar to how you might lock in an incorrect strategy to run a minimally exploitative calculation against an opponent's you know, incorrect calling range, when you lock in a set of bet sizes for your opponent, you're actually kind of you know, building a tree that limits them to use those bet sizes. And so if you limit them to using the bet sizes that you feel like they actually use at the tables, you're actually kind of minimally exploiting their bet sizing by doing so. And so it may be better for us to use bet sizes for our opponent that we think they actually use. So if, you know, say we do some work and we figure out that in certain spots, a turn min check raise is really strong, but we feel like our opponent never actually min check raises us there. You always 3x check raises us. If we want to kind of generate a strategy that's best against the bet sizing he actually uses, we might not want to put the strongest, uh, you know, if we imagine this min raises the strongest, we might not want to put that in our game tree. We might want to focus on the strategy he actually uses and minimally exploit that. And so when we're considering our opponent's position in the game tree, we might want his bet sizing abstraction to be weak, and we might want ours to be the best we know how to do. And so... Whenever we layer this bet sizing abstraction onto the full game and element hold on, we're actually kind of, you know, solving this game where we our opponent uses the bet sizes we assume and we use the bet sizes we assume and both players know that assumption. So we'll get into the, that a little more deeply, but it is important to understand exactly what you're doing from a theory perspective when you use GTO calculations with the bet sizing abstraction. And that's going to be part of the goal of this pack. Now, I also always like to try and tie back to some of the pure theory. Uh, results, and we'll do so with bet sizing. The best pure theory on bet sizing is from the Mathematics of Poker. They actually have a pretty short chapter on it, and it's not as generally applicable or useful as one might wish. They basically go through three games, um, a three, three types of games, a purely polarized versus purely merged range game, uh, an ace-king-queen game, and then a 0-1 game, and show three results. And the result of the 0-1 game is the one that's particularly important for us because what they prove is that in their model, GTO play actually would use infinitely many bet sizes. And if that were the case, and, and the EV gain from doing so was at all significant, that would be bad for, for people using GTO calculations to construct their strategy. 
And so what we're going to do is really get into that 0-1 game, understand why in their model an infinite number of bet sizes is important, and try and show how we can model that with computational solutions to see whether you know using a lot of bet size is actually going to be important in real world situations or not. So my hope is that by the end of this pack, everyone will understand the theory of bet sizing, uh, how many bets we really need, what sizes are good and why with certain types of ranges and certain types of board textures, how to use GTO calculations properly given this theory, and a, I'll go through a variety of real world examples of you know spots where bet sizing is important, EV important, where it will change your EV to use good bet sizing, spots where it doesn't, and uh, kind of a bag of tricks that I'd like to show you guys of examples of how you can use some non-standard sizings to directly win more at the tables. So that is a lot of material. I'm going to try and split this bet sizing topic into two strategy packs. Each will be about two hours of video. I think that's the most that is really digestible in one sitting. So part one is going to have a theory dissection. We're going to really look at the mathematics of poker and try and understand at a theory level, whether our best guesses from theory point to a large number of bet sizes being required or a small number being sufficient. Then we're going to look at a three bet pot bet sizing analysis because I think often people use similar sizing to what they might use in a single raised pot and don't carefully think about the effects of the stat to pot ratio on the bet sizing and also the importance of Overbetting. I looked at some of this a little bit in my three bet strategy pack where I pointed out that a turn check raise all in can be a really efficient way to realize equity with some kind of with a surprisingly non polarized range. So we're going to look a bit more at how stack to pot ratio can play into some of these bet sizing topics. Then we're going to take a look at a new trend of C betting a third pot in single raise pots, uh, usually in position. And this is a kind of interesting topic. Conventional bet sizing for a long time has been significantly larger than that. You know, some people do more like a half pot. Some people might do more like three quarters, uh, but somewhere, somewhere in that range, maybe say I'll represent it by 60%. And so to suddenly approximately half your C bet size is a massive change to your game. Every single turn is going to be quite different. Uh, rivers in particular are going to be, have very different stack to pot ratios than you're used to playing. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to see bet a significantly different range if you're using this size. And so I'm going to use uh, this strategy shift as a case study to really show how we can bring GTO analysis and tools to bear on a potential strategy shift and really analyze, you know, is this actually plus EV? Uh, if it is plus EV, what do we need to do to actually achieve that EV? How much does the rest of our strategy need to change? Do we need to change our turn and river bet sizings? How, how can we understand the new ranges that we might get using this size? Because this is, you know, if you say you've been playing poker for, you know, four or five years, gradually moving up the stakes, you're approving winning player up to, you know, say NL 100 or something, and you're trying to start playing NL 200, and you make a drastic change to your game like this, it's not hard for something like that to kind of send you into a tailspin because that strategy of C bidding a third pot is not the strategy that you honed and tested as you climbed the ranks. And so to make a big change like that, you need to have, you, you would really want to have a concrete measure of the payoff, at least reasonably concrete, and a clear understanding of why you're, why you're making that change, what other parts of your game need to change. Is the change kind of GTO motivated? Is this just what strong play looks like? Is a third pot just a better C-bet size against all opponents? Or is it an exploitative change against, you know, today's games that you need to be ready to revert as soon as people adapt uh, we know which if, if a lot of people start playing this way, they, people will adapt quite quickly. Um, if it is exploitative, what are you exploiting? You know, these are all questions. We want to have EV measurements, and I'll use this kind of as a case study to show how you can do detailed bet sizing analysis on your own. And finally, we're going to look at raising the river and uh, both river, river raise sizes, but more just how often you need to be doing it and how big the EV loss is to not do it. Because I feel like the bet sizing a lot of players use here is choosing just to call and not use any raise sizing. Um, this is a pretty big leak. If you run a flop scenario in a situation where, say, it's just a cutoff versus big blind or something, and remove the raise sizes for the IP player, you're usually going to be looking at a EV reduction of 10 plus big blinds per 100. So river raises are really important. And of course, if you only raise the river for value, you don't actually, you know, against a GTO opponent, 
or you know, it's an exploitive opponent, you wouldn't capture any of that EV that's to be gotten by using that river raising strategy. So I want to take a little bit of a look at how big a leak it is not to raise the river, how, we, you know, what kind of hands we need to raise the river with. But more what I want to look at is really trying to identify the key strategy lines where river raises get us a lot of that EV. So to do that, we're going to need to, you know, you can say, oh, if I would take this flop game tree, remove the ability for the hero to raise the river, because um, EV goes down by 10 BBs per 100. But doing that removal removes river raises from every possible strategy line. It removes it from when, you know, there's a C bet and a check raise and a call, and then both players check the turn, and then there's, you know, a river bet. You can't raise that. But it also do it in totally different situations where the flop goes check, check, and then OP leads the turn, hero call, uh, IP calls, and OP leads the river again. You know, there's all these different strategy lines where we're removing river raises. And so what I want to do is look at how we can pick very targeted places where we just identify a few key strategy lines where river raises are particularly important, where we can study those raising ranges in isolation and really increase our EV and understand the proper sizing in those cases. And so to do that, we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, work to understand exactly how we relate the change in EV on a river situation that we solve starting at the river back to the change in EV at a situation that we solve starting at the flop. Um, but I think this actually may end up being one of the most valuable parts of the video because uh, from my experience working with even some very high level players, I just know that most people don't raise the river enough. So that is our roadmap. And without further ado, let's get into it.